our nearest neighbor. Our partner in space. So close that we land 12 men there and bring them safely home. The moon may be Earth's junior partner, but it pulls profoundly on us all. Sea turtles come ashore to lay eggs at new moon or full moon. Tides are highest and incubation best for the young. Not only does the moon influence biological cycles, but tides and timekeeping. By gradually slowing the spin of the planet, the moon has lengthened our day from 6 to 24 hours. Billions of years from now, the moon will make our day nearly 50 times as long. At more than 7,900 miles, Earth is nearly four times as wide as the moon and 80 times as massive. Fly 10 times around our equator and you have the distance to the moon. These are the phases of the moon. They're a shadow effect caused because only half the moon is lit by the sun. Here, it shines from the left. As the moon makes its 27-day orbit, half the face is constantly illuminated. That's the perspective from space. But the amount of lit surface we see from Earth changes day by day, like this. Though the sun has some influence, ocean tides are mainly the work of the moon. This time lapse compresses just over six hours, the interval between low tide and high tide. The world over, twice a day, tides rise and fall as lunar gravity tugs on the oceans. They bulge at either side of the globe and are pulled ahead of the moon because of the spin of the earth. But tidal drag is slowing that spin. Simultaneously, moon and earth are pulling apart Ultimately, our planet will spin only once every 47 days. And Mother Earth is subject to another tug of her satellite. It makes her axis wobble. The cycle lasts nearly 26,000 years. It means the pole star of today won't be tomorrow. debris orbits our red-hot proto-Earth after the impact of a planetesimal nearly half our size. This collision is thought to have formed the Moon. It solidifies from crust and mantle splashed up from the planet and from the projectiles that buzz the early solar system. Our infant Moon. Four and a half billion years later, it still bears the scars of those impacts, the dark regions, the so-called seas of the moon. They look that way because the interior of the young moon is still liquid, like the contents of an egg. So when the crust is punctured by a space rock, the resulting basin fills with lava welling from beneath. It solidifies into a mare, a sea of dark rock. Such upwelling ceased just over three billion years ago as the interior hardened. This is the surface of today.
uneroded by wind or water and bare of vegetation, it is a stark record of impact after impact after impact. All that erodes old craters are new craters. There are craters within craters. This one, 55 miles wide, is pocked with later impacts. A smack like a pebble in mud. This is the Ray Crater Tycho. Compared to much older craters blackened by the sun, Ray craters are bright and young. They're caused by the splash of an impact and are the brightest features on the face of the moon. The Alpine Valley. Not a valley at all, but a great fault cutting through the lunar Alps. Smaller clefts are called rills, and they're possibly ancient lava channels. Here, the contrast of smooth mare and rugged highlands. We fly toward the Alps and over the dark crater, Plato. But this is a desolate place, barren, airless, and lifeless. By day, temperatures rise to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. At night, they fall to minus 250 and gravity is just one-sixth of Earth's. Nineteen sixty-nine. Astronauts Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins head for the moon. The Apollo 11 mission. Three and a half days later, Armstrong and Aldrin descend from lunar orbit in their landing module, Eagle. Armstrong skims the craters in search of a safe landing. They make history. We copy it down, Eagle. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's one small step. That's one small step. There are six Apollo landings, incredible achievements. But there are more to do with flags and footprints than with science. We copy it down, Eagle. But at the end of each mission, after rejoining the command craft, the lander is crashed back to the surface. The impacts ring the moon like a bell, indicating pulverized rock immediately below the surface, rock that reverberates. But the moon is solid, its core metallic. The astronauts return more than 840 pounds of rock to Earth. The samples are either volcanic or the product of impacts. 1998 and the Lunar Prospector mission. Prompted by these geological maps from an earlier survey, the hunt is on for lunar ice. This image hinted at the possibility. The circle is the Aitken Basin, a huge depression at the South Pole. Prospector sensors verify the hunch. Aitken has millions of tons of water but deep frozen and locked up in rock. It's the same story at the North Pole. The last astronauts left the moon in 1972. With water confirmed, they'll be back.